is Gretchen, and um, I am just loving that you are here and watching. Thank you so much. You can find me weekly here on YouTube, and I'm also on Instagram as Knit Mania Mom. So um, I so appreciate you being here. And um, this is just a little podcast that I talk mainly about knitting and all my different adventures with knitting and with yarn and all the different mail that I get, that kind of thing. Um, and also a little bit about the other hobbies that I love. Um, I love to cook and read, so those would be my other two. And I will probably be mentioning um, what I'm reading, cooking, cookbooks and stuff on a pretty regular basis. So um, I've decided to change the format just a little bit because um, I've kind of not had a format, <laughs> been kind of all over the place. And so I think that I am going to start with a knitting from now on and I'll kind of do a natural progression of finished objects, works in progress or whips, and then um, happy mail, and then, you know, what's going on with, with my life other than knitting. Um, because I, even though sometimes that's all I would like to do is knit, that's um, not really my reality, or most of ours, right? So um, with that said, and then that way, if you just like the knitting portion, you know, you can just chop it off <laughs> when I'm done with the knitting. Um, or I guess if you don't like the knitting, um, which I don't know why you would be watching the, the podcast if you didn't like knitting. But if you don't and you just want to hear about cookbooks and cooking and animal adventures, then you could fast forward to the end. So um, hopefully that will work for the majority of people. Um, so I do only have one little tiny finished object. And if you watched any episodes before, you'll know what it is. It's a hexi puff. Um, but this hexi puff, number one, I think it's probably the best that I've done construction wise. I'm pretty happy with it. I am going to go to my local yarn store today and get a um, chai goo um, needle, circular needle, um, 32 or 40 inch. I think I'll probably do 40 inch. Um, in the right size. I think this is a size, it's a size two or three because I really want to try Magic Loop. I've been doing all of these on DPNs and it's the only thing with your double pointed needles and it's the only thing that I've ever done with double pointed needles and I just, you know, I kept thinking, oh, if I do it enough, I'll get comfortable with it, but it just feels fiddly and cumbersome to me. That's that's the bottom line. And so um, I'm much more comfortable on Magic Loop. So I think that I might get a better product, uh, product, finished product. And I also think that I will probably be able to go significantly faster because I'm pretty slow on these. Um, and it's starting to annoy me. <laughs> I feel like I should be able to whip out one of these in between 30 min minutes and an hour for sure. Actually, I probably can do it in an hour, but I feel like I should be able to do it in like half that time. So we'll see. And then there's this color. Oh my goodness. It's called Smolder, which I think is a perfect name for this colorway. And it's by Birch Dye Works. So I told you, you know, a couple episodes ago that um, Row One is my favorite subscription and that if you love yarn, you should do it. Well, I'm going to give you a caution. I have loved the yarn that I've been getting so much that, you know, then I have to go on to the sites and I have to look and often I have to order, just have to, right? So yesterday I ordered Smolder and I found two other skeins that I felt like I really needed. So you'll be seeing those soon. And I have decided that one of the reasons why I love this so much is that the variegation, like really it's changing about every inch and a half, um, maybe two inches. And I really like the way that looks in the finished products. When you do a longer variegated, you kind of get that broken stripe look. And I like this look better. So that's good to know going forward so that I um, maybe get a little bit more discriminating as far as my yarn buying. Um, which would be a good thing. 
So then the next thing that I want to talk about is my sweater. And I am super excited because I did what I said I wanted to do and I finished the back. So one out of like six pieces is done, but it's the biggest piece. So um, I am very excited about that. I am liking the way it looks. Um, I'm a little ambivalent about the yellow, but I'm, I'm glad that it's up at the top and the back uh, because really my hair will cover most of it. And I do like this part. I just don't know like when it goes to like really yellowy how crazy I bit, am about it. It's called Caribbean Wave. It's by Trendsetter. It's 50% soy and 50% cotton. I will have to say that I am not loving working with the plant-based yarn nearly as much as I do the wool yarn. Um, I guess the main reason for that is the strands don't really cling together. So the strands are separate. And so it's really, really easy to, as you're knitting, like um, one of the strands not catch. And so um, I'm really glad that this is reverse stockinette because I feel like this side looks really good. But if you go to the knit side, I'm gonna reveal, you know, some of my, my ickies here. If you go, can you see like, yeah, there. So that strand didn't get caught. And it would, you know, if, if this was the right side, if the knit was the right side, whoops, then I would 100% not be okay with that. But since it's the wrong side, I don't care. I, I used to be somebody that like had to try to get it to be perfect everywhere. But uh, I'm getting over that. <laughs> the more I knit, the more I'm like, I want it to look good, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So that's the back. Um, the front is done in two pieces, which I like because it'll feel like it's going a lot faster, I feel. So I'm probably gonna cast on um, the one, one front piece this week. I am, but I have to say, that I'm not super excited about casting this on because it's basically going to be doing the same thing. But, uh, you know, obviously I want a finished object out of it. So I am going to cast this on. I would say that I've been pretty good about not, not casting on things in the past mm, two or three weeks. And now I'm just going to tell you I'm going to be bad. <laughs> I'm going to start casting on all the things. Um, I am putting myself in sock timeout um, for the rest of this month because um, sock camp starts June 1st. So Caitlin, Kay Litton, um, who's the crazy sock lady on YouTube, puts on this thing called sock camp. And you know, if you watch YouTube knitting, you're probably aware of it. You might've even done it. This will be my first year participating. It's, so it's a three month long, um, camp and you know it's all virtual and you don't have to sign up or anything but oh my goodness she has so many prizes for like finishing objects and doing different things so I'm really excited about it because what I've decided um, she has a bunch of tutorials that she's going to be doing and then she has um, different people that are leading different um, like style. So if you're a toe up, there's a toe up. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember what she calls it. It's not like a camp cabin. I think it's a cabin. Okay. So there's toe up cabin, there's magic loop cabin, like whatever you want to do. So I'm going to take this opportunity since there's like really seasoned, um, experienced knitters that are going to be leading these cabins in the style that they prefer. I'm going to really take this opportunity to try to learn all the techniques. So I'm going to try to knit all the socks. <laughs> so at this point, it's three months. I've been doing one, one pair of socks a month this year. Um, May, that's not gonna happen and I'll tell you why in a second. It should have happened, but it's not. Um, so I'm going to try toe up. I'm gonna try flexi flips. I'm going to try nine inch circulars. 
I'm going to do stripes like um, Kay has been doing with the share pair. So I'm going to do that. And I'm also going to do Earth Tones Girl Denise just came out with a new pattern called Sock Exploration. And I've been watching as she's gone through like doing so many different heels and like researching and going into all kinds of different books and um, really doing a deep, deep dive on sock architecture. And so I bought that pattern today and I might have gone to the Cozy Knitter, which is where she, she did, has a sample of her, um, of her, I want to say recipe, her pattern. And um, it's beautiful. And the yarn is by Cozy Knitters. So of course I went on there and I got that skein, but there was another skein that was so gorgeous. And I told myself I can only buy one and then I bought both. <laughs> I have to, I have to quit being on Instagram. I think that's the thing. Like <laughs> you see so much beautiful yarn. So that is my plan is to try to do five pairs of socks from, um, for June, July, and August. So that'll almost be doubling what I'm doing. So that means that my Sweater is probably going to take a back seat. It's not going to get out of the car. <laughs> it'll still be, uh, you know, something I'm working on, but it'll take a back seat, which I think is fine because, um, you know, do I really think, even a lightweight cardigan, do I really think that I'm going to need a cardigan in Southern California in June, July, August? Probably not. I mean, if I had it, I would wear it. I would find a place that's cold. <laughs> I would find a restaurant or a store that was cold enough to wear it. And they do exist, but um, it's probably not a need. So I'm not too rushed about that. So the other thing that I wanted to share about knitting, I think this is my last knitting thing um, that I'm sharing today, is... My socks, I showed them once, but I think they were barely started. So these are um, socks that are by, the yarn is by Earth, U-R-T-H. And they are, um, these are the unique sock sets. So it's really cool because they come in two, skeins just like this or two cakes I guess it would be just like this and um, so you can knit them two at a time if you want um, and they're self striping as you can see let's see if you can see here so I bought these like two and a half three, three years ago before I had any clue how to do socks or even like I couldn't read a pattern like I could knit and I could purl and I could make a scarf <laughs> basically. <laughs> but uh, my daughter and I were at our local yarn store and we just thought this was so cool, which they are, and um, we bought them. So I thought I could find the box that they came in. They come in an actual little box just like that. And they don't have names, they just have numbers. I think this is 66, but I could totally be wrong. But you can go on to their website and look, and it shows the different colorways. They have a really pretty one right now that's kind of like rainbow oriented. Um, you know, everything's coming out rainbow right now because of Pride. So I am going to rip this whole thing out. Um, and the sad thing is that this will be the second time that I've ripped out a bunch of it. I did the heel flap and the heel turn and started on the gusset and then realized that somehow I had changed it from a medium to a small <laughs> from stitch wise and I didn't have any drop stitches so I you know I obviously decreased too much um, at one point and I still thought well I'm just gonna go forward I have pretty small feet it'll work out but then the gussets weren't matching up right for either stitch count and so I ripped back all the way to the beginning of the heel flap and started that so basically all of Sunday, 
all of Sunday's knitting, except for my 30 minutes of knitting in the morning, was wasted, <laughs> which was a little <sighs> disheartening. Usually I don't mind when I have to, um, when I have to rip back, but I was really trying to get these done, and so that was um, a little discouraging. But I'm kind of glad that it happened because I was not happy with these, with the way they are. Um, and I realized that with this self-striping, because this was what I was doing shorties, so you know, this is the cuff and this is the whole leg, that really none of the self-striping was gonna show. And so it's defeating the whole purpose of this yarn. So that's why I'm ripping it out. Um, I've decided that I really want long ones. When I was looking at their website to try to find the colorway of this, you know, it shows them going, you know, just to like right up, almost knee socks, I would say, like definitely past the calf. Um, so that, cause that really shows the whole striping to its best advantage. So I've decided that I'm gonna use these for my toe up and do them really long. So I probably, yeah, it's gonna take me a long time. Um, I need to find somebody that has little tiny feet <laughs> so that I can knit some for them. But I'm gonna just do mine in a medium 64 stitches cast on and um, try my best to finish them in time. And if I don't, oh well. But I'd really like to have them for the fall. I think that they'd be really, really cute. So I'm excited about that. Even though it's um, a rip back, I think ultimately I'm gonna be way happier with them than if they were shorties and just showed the green and the purple, especially because I'm just not that crazy about that green. So um, that's why I'm doing them toe up because that will just show in the toe and it'll only show when I'm not wearing uh, shoes. So I'm feeling pretty smart about that. <laughs> Okay, so that's um, all I have for knitting today, but I will say that um, I'm probably going to cast on a couple of things this week, so I'll have some new fun things to show. Um, as far as mail goes, I have a lot that's in transit, but the one big thing that I bought um, is this contraption. Here, let me bring it up. It's so heavy. It's so surprisingly heavy. So this is a ball winder and um, I'm really excited. I, um, you know, almost all, maybe all of the like indie dyed yarn that you buy come in Hanks. So this would be an example of a Hank. And so when you undo it, it becomes this long thing, like that long, and you need to either wind it into a ball or wind it into a cake. Um, otherwise it's just, it's not manageable otherwise. And I don't know, in my head it was not that big of a deal. And so I unwound one of uh, my Hanks, one of my favorite Hanks, and cause I wanted to get 20 grams off to send for a scrappy swap, and then I would have 80 grams. And it took me forever. Like it took me, I wanna say at least an hour to do. And my arms, okay, this is about my fitness, not anything else, but my arms were sore from like having to go around every time. Um, so um, there's several more, well, I have a lot of Hanks and am continuing to get Hanks and I definitely decided that that is not what I wanna be doing, is doing it by hand. So I bought that and I am probably the most unmechanically inclined person that you will ever meet. So I'm hoping that I can figure it out on my own, but I might have to have the hubby help. Um, mechanic, mechanical stuff and navigation are my kryptonite for sure. So we'll see. I'll tell you if I figured that out myself or if I had to have the hubby um, help me next week. I want to be independent and do it myself. I'm going to try. So um, I decided my husband dragged me again to the comic book store. He got another Mandalorian thing. And so I've decided I'm buying a pop every time. 
and I told you last episode I didn't know if I was going to go themed or just the ones that caught my eye. And this will definitely tell you I made a decision. Yes, it's Piglet. How cute is it? So I'm just going to be buying ones that give me joy. I have Freddie Mercury, Dobby, and Piglet. <laughs> so can you tell they do give me joy? And Piglet especially. I love, I've always loved Piglet because like, He's so shy and he's so afraid, but he still makes himself do things. And when I was little, I was like a sickly kid and skinny and we moved all the time. And so I kind of felt like Piglet. <laughs> and I was like, okay, if Piglet could make himself do things, so can I. <laughs> so maybe Piglet is my hero. I don't know. <laughs> that would be a weird hero. Sorry, I keep dipping back. I have this basket that I kind of throw things in that I want to share and um, with the podcast. And so, yeah, that's why I'm bending over all the time. So what I'm reading right now is something that I'm not very excited about, which uh, I don't know. That's kind of a weird thing when you're reading something like that. It's called When All is Said. And um, it's by Anne Griffin. And the reason why I'm reading it is I am part of a Facebook physical book club. So I think it's a great premise. It's my second year doing it. So um, this great gal um, organizes like 12 people in groups of 12. And I don't know how many she's running, but quite a few. And so everybody buys a book. For the year and then they buy a journal and then what you do is you send it you know and so in theory you send it to 11 different people and 11 different people read it and then they write in the journal and so you can see like different people have written in it some people write you know kind of fancy and put inserts in it stickers and um and then at the end, so the 12th month, December, um, you get your book back with the journal, with everybody's entries in the journal. So it's it's a really neat concept. Um, it Both years have been bumpy in one way or another. Um, I think I, I missed, like somebody didn't send me a book at least one month. And then the biggest bummer is I never got my book back. But I didn't care about that that much. Like it was more about the process for me than the end result. Although it would, of course, have been nice to have gotten my book. So I would say the pros is it's exciting to get something in the mail. I like physical books way more than you know, like Kindle. Um, and it's really, it's fun to um, read books that you wouldn't normally ever pick. And there have been some that have just blown me away that were great, that I loved, that I never would have picked. So that gives me a huge amount of joy. Downside, you know, if everybody doesn't do what they're supposed to do, then hiccups, you know, happen. And then sometimes, you know, you get a book that you're just like, why, why did they pick this book? You know, and different people love different things. So understand that. But this one is about an uh, elderly gentleman and he's at a bar and he's, talking about he's uh it's set in ireland and um he's gonna raise five toes to the five people who have meant the most to him so like the whole book is like this one setting so that's not really my favorite but i haven't got very far in and i really am going to give it a good go and see if um if in the end i'm really glad because i do feel like most people they're not just grabbing a book like a random book and doing it for something like this, that they're putting some thought into it and there's a reason why they um, are sending it to you. So that's my theory. And um, overall, I'm glad I did it. So that's that. And then, uh, I'm really excited about this. This is the book that I got in the mail today, or not today, but this week. 
And um, I am so excited. I'm so obsessed. And now I don't remember the name of it. I was going to look it up and I didn't. It's, it's a weird name. But there is a bookstore in L.A., like downtown L.A., that is a cookbook only bookstore. Okay, you stole my heart. <laughs> uh, before I got into knitting, I would say my biggest hobby was collecting cookbooks and cooking from them, but mainly collecting. <laughs> and um, so by the time I found out about this store, uh, it was closed for COVID. And they had this huge sale um, and I bought four or five cookbooks last week. I just wanted to show this one, but um, it is, it was like 50 to 70% off. So what are you gonna do? And also I love, love, love supporting um, standalone bookstores. Um, bookstores and libraries and yarn stores are my happy place. So um, yes, I'm excited to, um, get into this book. It is not, I have a Marcus Samuelson cookbook and he's fantastic. I love him. He's like an amazing person and he has an amazing story and he's an, an amazing chef. Um, and he dresses very uniquely and I love it. Uh, but this one is actually, um, more, uh, it's Black Cooks and the Soul of American Food. So it's got lots of different authors, I believe. And I've glanced through it, uh, but I haven't like read it. Um, I read cookbooks like I read books, like I read from top, from beginning to end. And then I'll like highlight the recipes that I wanna try. And sometimes I actually do that. <laughs> so I think that that is all I have for today. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. Isn't this an amazing cup? This is what I feel like on the inside. This is me on the inside. <laughs> I love this cup. But um, I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, I would so appreciate it if you subscribed and um, maybe even shared with a friend. And um, we will see you next week. Just so you know, I know I had originally said that I would be trying to um, have a podcast every Tuesday and it turns out that Tuesdays just don't work well for our family's schedule so um, it will be probably on Fridays I'm thinking today is Wednesday so I'm recording today that'll give me a couple of um, days to edit it and which I've definitely found I need I need weeks to edit but uh, that's another story um, oh, and update on the kitty. Uh, he, Loki, will be two months, June 2nd, and he likes people now, and he is the sassiest little thing you've ever seen, and I will put some video of, I think, him being cute um, at the end, but next week I'll try to um, do some video of how sassy and crazy he can be. So um, that's all for today. I hope you have a fantastic week. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi there, cutie. I mean, do you get much cuter than this little guy? This is Loki, and he will be two months, June 2nd. Here's Mama. She's not nearly as cute, but... Hi, Loki. He was really afraid of people until like three days ago. And now he's like, I am super tough. I will beat you up and then I will lay on you 